Today we are tackling a very interesting topic, car finance options. A car is one of the most expensive things we spend money on and to be honest the majority of South Africans can't afford to buy a car cash which is where car finance comes in. In this video we'll be looking at finance options such as installment sale, long-term rentals, lease and I'll also try to address the issue of BMW Select and Mercedes Agility Finance in simple terms because wow, to ensure that no one gets left behind, let's start by focusing on the simple option that most of us are familiar with, which is traditional installment sale. With this option, you simply borrow money from a bank in the form of a car loan, which is a secured loan, and I'll break that down in a moment. With a traditional car loan, you pay off the car in equal monthly repayments over a period of up to 72 months, depending on how you structured your loan because every loan is structured differently. It's not like iPhone contracts from Vodacom or MTN where everyone just pays 1000 rands for 36 months for an iPhone 13 Pro Max. With car loans, two people can buy the same car for the same price, but their installments might not be the same depending on how their loans are structured. I'm paying 6600 for the 2022 Polo GTI but someone else out there is paying 12,000 rands for the same car. Your monthly installment is influenced by the deposit you pay, interest rate, loan duration and balloon payment. I thought I should clarify this because people often ask me how much is the installment of a Polo Life for instance and it's impossible to answer that question because there's quite a number of factors you should consider when you work out the monthly installment. If your car is financed, it belongs to the bank until the loan is fully paid. So the people's car is not really the people's car because it belongs to the bank that financed it. So now let's look at some of the disadvantages of that. Number one, if you happen to encounter financial difficulties and you can no longer pay for your car, the bank will repossess it because the car is used as security. Hence, a car loan is classified as a secured loan. Number two, we are not allowed to make modifications to the car without the bank's permission because it doesn't belong to you. You can't just finance a GTI and stage one it or put down pipes and drop suspension and all that kind of madness. Number three, it is compulsory to have comprehensive insurance when you, your car is financed because the bank needs to be assured that their asset is covered against damage or loss. Number four, you can't sell the car without involving the bank because the vehicle certificate is with them. I think we have covered enough about a secured loan. Now let's look at an unsecured loan. An unsecured loan is a loan that has no asset that is used as security against the loan. Examples of unsecured loans include personal loans and credit cards. For those who don't know, there are people who are buying cars with personal loans out there which is kind of a dumb thing to do because the interest rates on personal loans are extremely high. They can be as high as 20%, which is disadvantage number one. People who buy cars with personal loans are usually the guys who buy scrap cars from dodgy second-hand car dealerships. It's usually beat-up cars that cost around 60 and 75,000 rands because banks don't finance those. But when you go to the bank and ask for a personal loan, they won't ask you what you want to do with the money. You can spend all the money on strippers, no one cares. The only nice thing about buying a car with an unsecured loan is that the car belongs to you straight away. And if you happen to default on your loan, your car can't be repossessed because assets that you purchase with an unsecured loan are not used as collateral. But the extremely high interest rate will burn a hole in your pockets. Now let's move on to the second finance option, lease agreements. Here we are also going to briefly touch on BMW Select and Mercedes Agility Finance. With a lease, you only just pay for the usage of the car, almost like renting. And at the end of the term, you have three options. Number one, you can simply return the car and walk away with nothing. Number two, you can refinance the car and continue paying monthly installments. Number three, you can just settle the car with a lump sum and own it. The thing with lease agreements is that they come with a lot of crazy restrictions. If you've rented an apartment before, you'd know how crazy some of the clauses can be. Number one, they sort of restrict how many kilometers you drive per year. 
if you exceed the limit, there's a pendant. I'll use BMW Select as an example to explain this in detail in a moment. Number two, if you return the car with any damage that is not considered normal wear and tear, you pay. Number three, if you are not happy with the car and you want to let go of it before the end of the agreement, you already know what happens. BMW Select and Mercedes Agility Finance enable you to drive ridiculously expensive cars that you can't really afford by lowering the monthly repayments. These deals are usually referred to as special offers, but honestly, there's nothing special about paying for a car for three years and walk away with nothing at the end of the term. 10,000 rands multiplied by 36 months is 360,000 rands. That's money you would have flushed down the train in three years over and above the 10% deposit they expect you to pay. Some of you are probably wondering where is the 10,000 rands and 36 months coming from? You will see just now. With this kind of deals, the minimum period is usually 12 months and during that period there's a set number of kilometers you shouldn't exceed, usually 20,000 kilometers but you can structure the mileage limit to your preference. So you can't just be gallivanting with your car for no reason because you'd be wasting kilometers. So if you take a BMW 320i through BMW Select for three years with a mileage limit of 20,000 kilometers per year, that's three times 20,000 kilometers, which gives you 60,000 kilometers and that's the mileage limit for your whole term. You can exceed the yearly limit of 20,000 kilometers in the first and second year. That's not a problem. But at the end of three years, when you return the car, you must make sure that the mileage you have clocked doesn't exceed the 60,000 kilometers limit. If you exceed, you pay. And they normally charge around five rands per kilometer. So if you exceed the mileage with 10,000 kilometers, that's five rands times 10,000 and you will have to pay a penalty of 50,000 rands when you return the car and walk away with nothing. With the three-year agreement, you can't just return the car after two years if you don't like it. You have to pay all the money as per your agreement even if you decide to terminate the agreement early and walk away with nothing. Some people are still a bit lost, so let's use a real scenario as an example. Here's a BMW 320i Mzansi Edition offer. The car costs 891,000 rands and through BMW Select Finance, your monthly installment will be 10 triple nine, which is 11,000 rands. There's six bullets at the left corner outlining the terms of the deal. The last bullet says the total cost is 617,000 rands. That's the money you will pay to drive this car for 48 months, then return it and walk away with nothing. How do you get to 617,000 rands? Well, for this deal, they require a 10% deposit and 10% of 891,000 rands is 89,000 rands. 89,000 rands plus 11,000 rands monthly repayments for 48 months is 617,000 rands. The 453,000 rands GFV is what BMW guarantees your car will be worth at the end of four years. This simply means that the car will lose almost half of its value within four years and that says a lot about the resale value of BMW cars. They age like avocados. If you want to keep the car, you have to refinance the GFV or just settle with a lump sum. Now tell me why would you want to sign up for this deal? No, BMW is my dream car, so I must reward myself. Dream car you know. Just imagine walking away with nothing in four years after dropping 617,000 rands, excluding insurance. Hang <laughs> it. Mercedes Agility Finance is very similar to BMW Select. In a nutshell, this is more like a fancy way of taking a balloon with restrictions to ensure that the value of the car will settle the balloon when you return it and leave you with no shortfall provided you adhere to the conditions of your agreement. Let's move on to long-term rentals. Car rental companies are now offering long-term rental deals. This option is ideal for people who don't want the burden of a big car loan. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to worry about insurance and maintenance. Everything is covered by the rental fee. When now you just pour petrol and hit the road. And you can walk away anytime without any penalties, but then there's a mileage restriction. You can't just drive from Cape to Cairo as and when you wish, because I'm not manage about 
For a car like a Polo Vivo, we are looking at a monthly rental fee of around 7,000 rands. Then you must also hold petrol. You break, you pay. With most rentals, you don't get the option to buy the car like in the case of BMW Charter. You can rent a BMW 320i for around 15,000 rands and that also includes insurance. But at the end of the term, you can't buy and own the car. In closing, when you are planning to get a car, you must first assess which finance option is best for you and try to structure your deal in a way that's not going to suffocate you because cooking oil is very expensive. You don't want to find yourself googling recipes of how to fry eggs without cooking oil. Opting for a balloon payment is somewhat helpful in keeping your monthly repayments low but if you have to go down that route, chances are you just bought a stinking car you don't afford. Stick to your financial lay. Leave polos to those of us with big money. It's crazy that I just mentioned polo and big money in one sentence. How did we get here? Someone requested that I talk about trading in a finance car in detail and I'll cover that topic in a separate video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Amazon's context.